Hello. Um, I'm deeply sorry that uh, this year we're not going to be able to get together in all those uh, nice places that Guillermo is taking us to. But uh, in, in any case, I want to thank uh, Guillermo and Ignacio for all the hard work in organizing this uh, conference, uh, virtual conference. And I'm going to present uh, another work that um, we finished not too long ago, uh, a couple of students of mine in collaboration with uh, Ricardo Larcón. So let me bring up uh, the screen and start um, from here. Well, uh, the title is uh, the Gent uh, Force Study of uh, Protons uh, Interacting with uh, body parts would be more appropriate because not only tissues with bones and it is a continuation of a um, of a study that I presented a year ago in which um, we we use uh, the proton beams for a different reason but uh, I'll mention something about it in a, in a minute so let me get started I'm gonna remind you a little bit about uh, proton therapy and I'm gonna tell you something about uh, the methodology that we're going to be using, the type of simulations, and then the, the type of analysis, and uh, results and some conclusions. Well, uh, you know that uh, proton therapy is used uh, to irradiate uh, cancer cells. And they usually, the beam is usually accelerated by some device. There are smaller devices nowadays. And they are directed to a patient. And one of the advantages or differences with other types of radiations is that um, the beam interacts and doesn't uh, come out. It doesn't affect cells on the other side of um, the body. Whereas there are some other um, type of radiation, like uh, electrons, X rays, that uh, have the ability to go through. So this is, uh, for instance, X-ray therapy. It is affecting um, healthy cells before the tumor and healthy cells after. Whereas proton therapy, if uh, done correctly, can be deposited in a smaller region of the body. This is thanks to the Bragg peak. The um, protons tend to uh, not lose energy as they fly in. But all of a sudden, when the velocity reaches some uh, 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 magnitude, the, they interact strongly with, uh, ionize strongly the atoms nearby and deposit uh, a lot of um, energy in a very small uh, range. As the x-rays, we can see it here, whereas the x-rays, are uh, depositing energy in a continuous manner throughout uh, the trajectory inside of the body. To um, beam a, a specific region of the body, uh, to affect a specific region of the body, beams with different energies are uh, used so that uh, the combined range of activity it gets enlarged. This is the so-called spread out Bragg peak. This is the Bragg peak for the, the protons. So taking advantage of um, cancer cells can be treated with protons, but there is a problem. And the problem is that uh, how do we know where the beam is hitting? Is it exactly where we want it to be? Well, a possible solution is that uh, the, the beams, the protons, when they collide with uh, the body parts, they, among other things, they can produce gamma rays. And um, the gamma rays, if we capture them, we could be able to uh, find the, by geometry, find where the beam is hitting, where the uh, gamma rays are being produced. But, uh, and this is what we studied uh, a year ago. 
But uh, this uh, second part is um, a more detailed analysis of um, what kind of, uh, how, how can we learn about what, what kind of a body part the proton beam is, uh, is hitting. So these are the types of uh, reactions that usually take place uh, with proton. Protons uh, can be captured, plastic scattering, arrangement. But um, there are some gammas coming out, and those are the ones that we're going to be um, studying. So this is what we did a year ago, determining where the beam is hitting. And uh, we presented this in uh, Tabasco in our meeting there. And uh, it was published, and but um, we were using a collimator to capture the gamma rays and try to work uh, the geometry backwards to see where they were being originated. But now the question is, uh, where are these uh, protons being produced? What kind of a body part is producing the, the gamma rays? Um, So the hope is that uh, by looking at um, uh, the gamma rays, we can hopefully distinguish between gamma rays being produced by lung, by bones, by blood tissue. So we're going to run a simulation, a Gen 4 simulation, where we're going to compare these uh, gamma rays. And the differences we're going to try to use to find um kind of uh determining if it is possible to identify the source well we're going to be using gen 4 gen 4 is uh as you know the, the standard for simulation is basically a Monte Carlo simulation and it is used in many areas of physics and you start by defining some sort of a space in which everything is going to happen that would be your world and then after that you define something else, like for instance, the target. In this case, is going to be the body parts are going to be here. Tissue, we're going to fill this with tissue, and then um, we the rest of this is going to be the detector. We can use it as a detector. Any any ray that and gamma ray that comes out from this and gets into this second space is going to be detected and counted. So we need um, a uh, beam of uh, protons and then uh, a bunch of uh, gamma rays that are being produced. And every time that we do it, we're going to be uh, creating an event and we're going to run events in the thousands of millions. So the materials that we're going to be analyzing are these. Uh, first, uh, water, because this is the standard. We're going to be comparing everything against water. And then tissue, lung, blood, brain, bone, and uh, the types of uh, muscles. The, the proton energy that we're going to be using uh, is comparable to those used in um, proton beam machines, uh, anywhere from 60 to 180 uh, MeVs. And we're going to focus our analysis on the peaks, on the gamma ray peaks. Uh, the gamma rays are produced by brain strolong, but also by resonance peaks. And the resonance peaks are, are those strong peaks that are seen. And we're going to look at the ones in water. And these happen to appear everywhere because everything has water. But uh, they are going to be modified by what's around it, around the water. And uh, we're going to make a comparison to see if it can help us determine the source. So these uh, the sound peaks are at these energies. And here they are, uh, one, two, three, all the way to seven. And we're going to concentrate uh, on looking at those uh, gamma peaks uh, for the different uh, materials. And we're going to be doing it at different um, uh, energies. Session. So here we have water being bombarded at these energies. And this is a collection of gamma rays that we managed to see. And you can just easily distinguish the different uh, heights by uh, with respect to the energy. Uh, among the other things that we're going to look is uh, we're going to do a peak-to-peak -peak comparison. So we're going to run a fit of a Gaussian fit, and then we're going to use the so-called energy, energy resolution of each of those uh, peaks. So this is um, one um, spectrum from uh, water, and you can see clearly the, the peak, one of the peaks here being fitted 
with a Gaussian. And we're going to do uh, all this type of analysis, find the central, uh, who we have to the, um, the resolution, um, et cetera, et cetera. And those are the numbers that we're going to be comparing. So for instance, if we do water versus long, there is not much difference. As you can see, it's hard to get uh, anything. But if we look at the resolution, then we don't get much difference for most of the peaks. But there are some peaks that basically disappear with long and appear with, uh, with water. So there is an R. This is, oh, no, this is, sorry. This is the full width half maximum. The full width half maximum is different uh, for that point. If, um, if we look at T, if you compare water, T, and long, we also see a few differences. And we can find, for instance, the, again, big differences in some cases. And this is just to show you the type of study. I'm not going into details because of the time. Here we are comparing water, bone, and brain. And we have big differences in the, the full width have the shape of the of the peak. Also, we have the same uh, type of analysis for other factors like uh, sigma, like R, the energy resolution, and so on. So basically, we found differences between body materials, and we didn't find uh, the differences fitted any specific uh, distribution. And we ended up uh, comparing 11 materials to seven energies and looking at all the parameters, looking at uh, four parameters. And this is just uh, to show you all the things that we uh, evaluated, numbers for different uh, elements here. This is the, the seven peaks, the full width half maximum, the R, the maximum height, and the area under each of the peaks, uh, how we can compare those to each other. And in conclusion, uh, we find some specific points that are relevant, like for instance, uh, the area of uh, the gamma rays produced by lung is uh, less than uh, that of the water by 30% of this energy at the 2.3 MeV. And uh, it's much reduced uh, in some other cases. But the, the peaks, um, the full width have maximum is totally different between uh, tissue and water. It's uh, of the order of three and 400 uh, percentages. And so on. So this is um, uh, just to show you the spirit of the evaluation that are in the paper. There are some more specific points about this comparison. So this, uh, in conclusion, this study is a good uh, a good start. What we need now is to combine this study with the study that we that I presented a year ago, because uh, these two are going to, I keep saying a year ago, but it's less than a year ago that we were in Tabasco. But anyway, um, the, 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 the capture of gamma rays with the, uh, with the collimators and now the identification of the gamma rays in, uh, in, in terms of the shape and doing all of that at the same time. So that would be the, um, what we propose for the future. And um, I have a, um, picture of uh, Omar, the, the thesis was, um, he was the one that wrote the thesis. Salim was the one that wrote the previous thesis. Jason was uh, is now uh, postdocing or employed by Mayo, Mayo Clinic in Phoenix. He was a student of uh, Ricardo Alac. And with that, I stopped. I thank you. Let me see if I can bring up the camera to say, by in person. Okay. Thank you. And adios.